we live in an era where the technological advancement kind of overshadows our past i should say the technology of the past we have here in spotlight is the astrolabe the name astrolabe has its origin from the greek words astron and lambanian meaning the one that catches the heavenly bodies this technology is almost forgotten but it's still very in- intriguing nonetheless the device is a two dimensional model of the celestial sphere let's know more about it It is thought to date back to as far as Ptolemy or even older. The oldest known astrolabe is from the late 8th century. By the 13th century, it was popular in Europe, so much so that Geoffrey Chaucer wrote a personal manual explaining the working of the device to the 11-year-old Louis. Most educated individuals would have possessed an astrolabe and its use was taught in universities. The devices from these times were made mostly of paper or wood. with some crafted in metal this device boasted as many as 1000 uses in its time some of which being reading time date calculating distances and other mathematical equations measuring the positions of planets occultations etc it had different variations for different purposes like a regular astrolabe a marina astrolabe it was the modern analog of a smartphone with its multi purpose functionality and intricacy The planispheric projection involves plotting a sphere on a plane. The front of the astrolabe is a combination of two such projections. One is that of the celestial sphere from the celestial north pole to the tropic of Capricorn. The sun's path in the sky is on the ecliptic, and the other is the local sky visible to an observer on the earth. The plate's circumference has the time markings and the directions go as south, west, north, and east. The dotted line is the twilight line. In the center lies the celestial north pole, and the circular lines telling the altitude are called the almucantars. Between two lines of almucantar is the projection separation of five degrees, and the horizontal lines are the azimuth lines. The almucantar and azimuth lines give us the altas coordinates of the stars. The back of the astrolabe has the dates and the corresponding zodiac signs. The ruler at the back is called the alidade. We look at the back of the astrolabe. Today is September the 16th and uh, we can use the alidade to find the position of the sun in the ecliptic. So September 16 is somewhere over here. And that gives us the sun's position in the ecliptic in the constellation Virgo. specifically at Virgo 25 now we turn to the front of the astrolabe okay and uh, we look for a star in the sky which can help us fix the exact position of the sun now we look at we look at arcturus specifically and it is at an altitude of 30 degrees and setting this tells us that it if since it's setting it has to be in the western half all right and 30 degrees is so this is 20 40 so 30 is over here now we just move this rule to point at virgo 25 and just being careful not to move the right virgo 25 and we get the time to be around 7 which is close to the actual time 7:30 This device points out not only the craftsmanship but the amount of knowledge the people of the past had Despite the age of this technology it is still very relevant and useful today But even with that there are some important limitations like its grid which is latitude dependent and hence a traveling person would have to carry different plates for different locations Moreover, as it was made for the northern hemisphere, an astrolabe for the southern hemisphere would have the celestial sphere flipped over and a completely different red containing stars from the southern skies. Now we have a timekeeping system that is connected throughout the globe with a standard unit of time. The technology that we have today, even though being very swift, has made us lack the awareness of the sky that normally will go unnoticed 
but is very appreciated by an astro enthusiast. <laughs>